So, Manny Lagos, uh, congratulations. A uh, big moment in the club as you transition from kind of technical director and head coach to sporting director. Um, first, why don't you explain to us what a sporting director is and how you see that role moving forward? Sure, sure. You know, um, yeah. I, it was before I start talking about the sporting director, I'm obviously, uh, you know, it, it's it's super exciting time. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, the new challenges the club has as we grow and the momentum we have for uh, the vision of where the club is heading. Uh, but certainly, you know, I, I would be remiss not to talk about uh, the great moments I've had in the last six years, both coaching and being the technical director for the club. I've been incredibly uh, rewarding and uh, challenging and, uh, and some great people to work with. So, um, you know, this, uh, this announcement is, is certainly, to me, so positive because it, it reflects on the last six years and how the club has grown and, and my, hopefully, influence on, on the growth of the club. Um, and, and really what we look at in the club in the future is we have a lot of initiatives and growth in the sporting side that we really believe that have to have short-term plans to make sure we're successful on the field, that make sure that we're competitive, to make sure that we are one of the clubs that, frankly, makes all of our fans and all of Minnesotans proud uh, week in and week out during the season. Uh, and there's certainly long-term visions about how do we can become a better club and grow and get bigger one, three, five, and even, frankly, seven-year plans that are going to be important to us for us to start thinking about a uh, bigger picture as we want to grow to become one of the best clubs uh, in North America and, frankly, the world. So um, a sporting director really has a, a role of, of trying to make sure and navigate to try to create an integration and synergy uh, with the initiatives that the club is putting forth, and in particularly making sure that we have a vision uh, of being competitive uh, for the long term. Talk a little bit about your history as a, as a player, and you, you touched on a little bit as a coach, but how do you think having been in this game for so long at so many different levels is going to set you up for success as a sporting director? Well, I, I, I think any position, any job um, that you take, uh, you have to absorb all the experiences you have. You have to take have an ability to really uh, use that uh, to grow and get better. And, and ultimately, um, I'd be lying if I wasn't looking at this as a new challenge and a new chance for me to learn and get better every day. But I, I really believe that's the case for many things that anybody does in, in their livelihood. They're, they're taking on new challenges. They're going to go in with the confidence of what they've done in the past and things they've learned, but they certainly have to be focused on, on may, being open to really learning and, and getting bigger and better. And I think in particular with this situation for me, I, I feel at a great time and place in my life where I've had uh, you know 15 years of high-level pro soccer experience, uh, participated with the U.S. national team in the Olympics, uh, you know, particularly in MLS, had a very successful playing career, winning three MLS championships. So there's a lot of pieces there where I, I feel very good about uh, the vision, particularly this moment in time and where the soccer is going uh, as, a, as a sport in this country. Um, and I, I feel very confident about uh, now having had a lot of experience in both the coaching world uh, and frankly the front office, the ups and downs of, of how difficult it is to continue to try to become a powerhouse as a club in this country and for the country, frankly, itself to become a, a powerhouse globally. Uh, and I, I'm very excited to take on those challenges and try to play my part in terms of uh, building what I think uh, from the past experiences, uh, what we can do and, and what we can become. You talk about globally. Um, you've played internationally. Um, you've certainly played domestically. And then as, as the coach of the team in recent years, the team has traveled internationally. And it seems like you have done a good job of setting up all these connections all over the world to be able to find players, um, how do you anticipate using that history and all those connections to tap into finding the best players to bring to Minnesota? Well, I think it's important that we have a confidence and belief in what we're doing and the goals we have, because frankly, you know, I, I think this is for our country. We need to get better at soccer. We want to be more relevant globally, but we have to also look at our history and say, you know what, we're doing a pretty darn good job. There's a lot of things we do really well. There's a lot of things that we have that other countries don't. So um, when I travel and we try to travel as a team, we, we, all, we try to go both ways. We try to absorb as much soccer knowledge and, and environment and culture of what other countries are doing. But frankly, when we come back here, the belief is going to be that this is where we are from. This is our home. This is our place. We can only do things within the relative of what makes sense for, for Minnesota United and for Minnesotans. And um, when I put it in that sentence, I get very excited. I'm from here. I know this market. I know these people. I know 
the culture that we have is very conducive to us creating an atmosphere and environment uh, both on and off the field uh, that can be a relationship to make us a very, very successful club in the long run. So it's just exciting. You know, again, there's a lot of work that's going to be done, but it's also exciting when you travel and you meet people and, and you get to see the things that you want to strive for. But you also get to see the things you're doing well, which reinvigorates you saying, you know what, we are on a good path. We're going somewhere. We've sent a lot of Brazilian players recently, traveled to Brazil for preseason last year. Is that uh, an area that you look to continue to explore to find new young talent to bring to Minnesota? Or you want to expand outside of, of just that area and, and look in other places? Well, I, I think as you um, navigate how to, to build a team, I, I think you've said it first, this is not something that is just domestically. I mean, certainly, hopefully as a club, we will start to continue to address even more how do we uh, build a, a great domestic base of players, frankly, even Minnesotans. Uh, if we can make that a long-term initiative, I think we, we certainly will. So, but. On the, on the other side of that, we have this big global game, and that fishbowl is massive. And, and ultimately, uh, the ability to go out and find talent and players shouldn't be limited to just uh, your, your local market. Uh, we want to have this be a great global team. Uh, we want to participate in the global market to find players. And uh, we've been very successful uh, in the last few years of uh, finding some great Brazilians. But frankly, that has a lot more to do with the character and, and the type of people they are combined with how good they're in the field that makes that work. So um, no matter what happens as you build uh, this club, you know, we have to take into account what our goals are, what our vision is, what our resources are, and what type of players we, we can go find. Uh, but ultimately, we take pride in that. We take pride in that. You know, it, I don't think it will always be one specific country, uh, one specific moment. I think you could certainly sit down and have a beer with, with anybody and me and talk about, well, why is, is Brazil or, frankly, South America maybe an easier place to get players right now than Europe? Um, and a lot of that has to do with the global market dictates that and, and your own market dictates that. So, again, I, I see this great evolving uh, ability for us as a club as we grow to make an influence about how we go find players and develop players. Uh, one of our newest acquisitions is 2015 NASL Golden Boot winner, Stefano. Um, are younger guys like him that are certainly on the up rise part of your vision for this club? Well, I, I think no, there's no doubt about it. Every year, um, you know, the coaching staff and, and myself have to kind of think about what we did well, what we did, and how we can get better. Uh, and that to really kind of dive into what, what it takes to win, what are the ingredients to win, year in and year out and, and how do you keep a core how do you build off that core and certainly that's it's important to find a balance of younger and older players of players who are experienced players who are hungry players who are uh, trying to uh, reinvent their careers and, and all of those things mesh together to be competitive so uh, for example with a situation like this we're just really excited to get a really good young player who um, we feel has a lot of potential and uh, somebody who's going to make a big influence on the team Looking ahead uh, as we transition into MLS, have you given any thought yet to designated players and what that looks like for Minnesota? You know, the, the, the bigger goal is, is not necessary to look at, at the big picture players, but the bigger goal is for us to, to transition uh, as competitively as possible into MLS. And, and I really believe it starts with the little things and it starts with the little moments about how we uh, build off of, uh, frankly, what the office has been doing in the, uh, right now for the last couple of years and the culture and environment we've created on the field. And how do we mesh that together with finding the, the right type of players that are ultimately going to make us uh, extremely competitive for the future, no matter what league we're in. But it's very important uh, that this year as a year that we do that, that we figure out a way to continue to build on the culture and environment and bring in people that we think are going to be competitive, not just next year, but for many years to come. And I think from that, uh, then we can think about those bigger picture pieces and how they fit into uh, what we're doing and not the other way around. When you talk about competitive and, and even you know, winning championships, um, what do you see as the biggest hurdle over the next few years to achieving that goal? Well, other teams, frankly, <laughs> that's to be honest, you know, there's teams that also want to do it and they're playing against you. But, uh, you know, it, I don't know if you can say one specific thing, but it, again, there's going to be a transition uh, for the club. And uh, one of the nice things I think that this club has is we have experience in dealing with uh, adversity, dealing with stress. And 
ultimately, I think that uh, your ability to create a, uh, a competitive consistency gives you the opportunity to be successful and win championships, particularly in North America, um, as you try to build towards the end of the year where you want to be as, as consistent as possible. So I, I really do believe, um, you know, for us, being able to deal with the transition in a way that gives us the ability to deal with stress and adversity uh, is going to be very, very, very beneficial to our success. When you look at the two teams that joined Major League Soccer last year in Orlando and NYCFC, uh, I think everyone would agree there were some flashes of greatness, but ultimately these teams didn't succeed in, in getting where they wanted to go right out of the gate. Um, what do you see as the path to success to being one of those teams that right out of the gate is a championship caliber, caliber team? Well, I mean, it's, it's important. We, we've done a lot of work looking at past expansion teams and how they've operated and, and how they've kind of uh, decided to uh, transition uh, into the league where they were a uh, pre-existing USL team or whether they were just starting up from scratch. And so we've done a lot of work looking at what has been successful and hasn't. And ultimately, like I said, it's going to be important for us to take all of that information, but we have to be who we are. We have to make decisions based on what we've done in the past and who we've done. And one of the nice things, obviously, in 98, I was on an expansion team that won an MLS championship. So I think right there, my mindset is that we shouldn't accept maybe the fact that we're an expansion team, that we can't be competitive, that we we won't go out there and, and uh, you know try to put the best product in the field to compete to win a championship from the year one. I just think having that mindset will help us uh, make sure we understand that the, the level of accountability is that we want this club to be great. We want to win. We want to win championships. We want our fans to be proud of their product in the field. Outside of just building the team that people will see uh, on television, part of sporting director sometimes entails reserves teams, academies, um, growing other areas of the sport within the club under that umbrella. Is that something that you anticipate doing right away as we begin that transition to Major League Soccer? Or is that something that will grow over time? Well, well the nice thing is, is those concepts are all very, very exciting. And, and in reality, a lot of those things have been being worked on behind the scenes. Now, when we decide to kind of really push hard into those areas, uh, it'll be determined by a little bit of making sure that we do the first thing first, there's a transition right for the first team to be competitive from day one in MLS. And that's really our, our first goal, because ultimately that sets up uh, you know, the kind of base for the future of, of all those programs. But I would tell you I'm very excited about uh, the potential uh, of what we can be, particularly because I know this community, I know this environment. Um, and, and I also know that we're going to have an ownership group that's uh, you know, really going to push a great vision for us to be a great club. And those pieces are going to be a, a big part of us uh, growing but I think the kind of uh, competitiveness we can become. So with MLS a year or two away still, we, we do have a league uh, and games to play next year. Um, so a few questions about that. Um, when you looked at Stefano and, and how he burst onto the scene last year, what in particular about him excited you that said, we're going to bring this guy in and he's going to be a, a huge asset for us? Yeah, I, I think, you know, every time I, I talk about new players, I think about what our current roster and current players have done over the last couple of years and the type of um, commitment and uh, competitiveness and, and quality they've brought to the field. And, and I, you look at things that maybe we need a little bit more of the explosiveness, a little bit more of the power, a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say we, we've done a good job scoring goals, but you always want to find finishers because you don't want guys who are hungry to score. And, and I think that, uh, you know, that type of commitment makes other guys want to score more. So ultimately, you know, we look at the NSL as an incredibly competitive league, as a league that, uh, you know, uh, has a unique way of, of building and, and building rosters. And uh, Stefano you know, is somebody that we identified it as that he can definitely help us in terms of some of those things that maybe we lack this year. Uh, talking defensively, um, is that an area that you look to address anything along the back line um, to to try to widen the gap between a team that scores the most goals in the league um, and maybe now have a team that allows the fewest goals in the league? Well, again, I, I think you want to look and think always about how uh, if you're good defensively, um, you're in any game. I think you want to think about how we, we've certainly taken a lot of pride over the last several years of, of being a, a great defensive team and, and really thinking about how the middle spine is so important for how we kind of um, – navigate uh, being competitive. And, and certainly, again, I, I think this, this next year coming up, 
um, particularly as, as Carl takes a more bigger role in terms of uh, you know, that player assessment as well. Um, it's exciting because we have this great core. And again, it would be much harder if we had to completely transition our entire team. I think the exciting thing now is we get to kind of just tweak things, and we have to tweak things with the, in mind of what, what we can do for the future. And again, I, I think that should be incredibly exciting for our fan base, uh, and it's certainly exciting for the club. You talked about Carl a little bit. Let's, let's talk about uh, the guy who is going to follow you on the touchline. Um, Carl's not new to the club, certainly not new to you. What makes that such an easy transition for you to walk away from the touchline and knowing he's going to step right up? Well, I, I think we just start with a personal one. You know, I, I personally uh, have a relationship with him, which is outstanding, and uh, know him uh, off the field and, and what type of person and character he is. So I, I think just from that right away, uh, that's an easy uh easy transition uh, when you're hiring somebody there is a little bit of an unknown about the true character as you get to know people we don't have that here we've got somebody we know we know who he is we know what he's about we know the type of person he is uh, you know off the field in particular uh, and then you know having worked with him for six years on the field and his ability to uh, you know push the club to get better to push himself to get better to push me to get better uh, to help us on, on all areas, uh, through the good, bad, tough times. Um, I, I'm just couldn't be happier for, uh, for the transition, the way it's going to go. I, I think that type of continuity uh, is going to be incredibly important as we, again, try to push the level of our culture and environment uh, to be successful. What do you see as Carl's strengths as he takes over the team? Um, it, you know, again, I, I think one of the nice things about this transition is I said, oh, there's continuity. But the reality is Carl is Carl Craig, not Manny Lagos. And he's one of his strengths is he's going to have his own beliefs and, and his own system uh, for as a coach combined with I think he truly does believe in me and, and my vision and what I'm trying to do to, to make the club bigger and better. So ultimately, I, I think the, the strength of Carl Craig is Carl Craig. Uh, is a great first simple statement. But then from that, uh, he's got a great mind. Uh, he's somebody that sees the game really well. He's somebody that tactically and, and technically, uh, you know, does a good job of, um, of helping players identify how they can get better and how they can influence the bigger picture and the bigger team game. How do you see your role during the week uh, over the next year? Uh, do you find yourself thinking you'll be out at training? Um, and watching the team there, or more kind of in the office behind the scenes? I, I, again, I, I think you, like I said, I, I don't uh, pretend that uh, everything is the same when you go from doing a dual role to separating them now, and you're gonna kind of try to learn and make sure that you try to do what's best for the club and what's best for what the club needs. So ultimately, um, I see a role where there's a lot of big projects ahead. There's still a lot of uh, smaller things that we have to make sure we're doing the little things right because uh, just like in the field, those little things make a big difference. So, again, I, I see the role as transitioning, but I also see it uh, in a way that, uh, you know, again, is exciting and a little bit unknown, which, uh, again, today it's nice to do this interview when you're in a spot where you're, you're talking about the excitement, but you have to be honest and say, hey, that's what, why you're doing this. It's an unknown new challenge for me individually. So it's a, it's a big day personally uh, to kind of let people know that, and I'm excited for it. Uh, knowing you as I do, you're, you're an excitable guy on game days. I know you love standing on that touch line and coaching up the players, being around the guys, uh, talking to the refs in some form or fashion. What are game days going to be like for you now? Do you, do you anticipate missing being down there? Um, or is it the excitement through the roof about some other role that you'll have on game days? I, I, I think it's it's the new role. Like I said, with this decision comes new challenges and you have to be focused on those new challenges and you have to make sure you, uh, you know, you look at every challenge as an opportunity to grow and, and help yourself in the club. And, and frankly, for me, uh, you know, those, uh, those moments you talk about are important, but that's the role of a head coach. And I have to be really focused on Again, every day think about how can I help the club, this club get better? How can I help uh, this team get better? Uh, and so that, that'll be my focus now. So that's, that's really where my head will be at.